Can you guess? Who, who do you think you're talking to? Is this Hacksaw Jim Duggan? It's Mick Foley. Think again, brother. Oh, my God. Feel yourself. Keith <laughs> Costas. Excellent work by you, brother. <laughs> WWE <laughs> superstar Keith Costas. Ray Mysterio Costas right there. What a legend. Uh, that was, that was, that was awesome. One of the greatest segments ever. No, One of the greatest man. segments ever when Costas came with the mask. Did you really have no idea? I had no Keith? idea. I really thought it was Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Turns out it's Keith Costas. It's awesome in the back. Keith wanted to make sure we explained that is not his mask. <laughs> he doesn't have a collection of masks uh, somewhere here on the You know what? Studio. I'm not sure if he does it, buddy. <laughs> well, no, you don't know what Keith does when he goes home at night. Keith, well, we got to let you defend yourself here, Keith. Come clear on my now. name. This mask is being retired. It is no more. That was one time. One time Ooh, only. Come on, Costas. There you, go. you wear it well, buddy. <laughs> that was awesome. All right, the Sean Casey, the mayor with us here. Here, uh, riding out the uh, the rest of hot stove. And guys, we talked about it earlier here at uh, spring training. Uh, pitchers and catchers are reporting for most teams starting in next week. And, and guys are already getting an early jump start. And Matt Harvey is one of them around. You're yeah. obviously going to see a lot of Matt Harvey coming up. And Harvey obviously coming back off Tommy John surgery. Wanting to get going. Anxious. Already down in Port St. Lucie. Saying there's a Lowe's. Jacob DeGrom there. Uh, but the, here's Harvey now on just getting back into the swing of things. The offseason was good and, and, you know, preparing for a normal uh, spring training was, was nice. It was um, much anticipated uh, coming down here and, and uh, you know, happy to get started. Coming down here feels like I really haven't missed a whole year. I'm healthy, so uh, whatever they decide, you know, obviously that's what we're going to go with. And, and um, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens throughout spring training. Matt Harvey's got a uh, deadpan kind of quality <laughs> to him. Could be one of the true superstars of the game. Great personality, Case. What do you expect from him, though, uh, getting back on the diamond? Well, yeah, I think, I mean, you know, Ron, you're with those guys a lot. He's, he seems like a guy that's going to be itching to get back out there, be ready, Big time. and just wants to get on the toe of the slab and start throwing some strikes and see how he feels, get back in that competition. But, well, you know, what do you think is going to be his biggest – hurdle he's going to have to have to face coming back, you know, all, all from all this time. I think his biggest hurdle is just calming down because I think they're going to have him on some kind of program throwing regimen to make sure that, you know, he doesn't go over a certain amount of pitches. You know, Jordan Zimmerman, a year after he came back from the same surgery, he only made 26 starts, 28 for Strasburg the year after. Um, they kept him around that 160 inning mark. So they want to kind of do that with Harvey. One of the reasons being is that in New York, they expect to be playing some October baseball. You know, they don't want to be stuck without him or the ability to use him at all in October. But I wanted to ask you, spring training is a very funny thing because it goes in two different speeds for pitchers and hitters. <laughs> pitchers are firing bullets <laughs> from day oh, one, and the hitters are in there like, wait a minute, I have no chance of catching up with that. And by the end of March, it's always the same. Yeah. If you throw one down the middle, it's getting hit right back at you. <laughs> well, you know, at the beginning of spring training, when the, you guys come out just flamethrowing, <laughs> and at the, when, early on, when you're, you know, when you're a young player coming in, you want to make an impression, you take a couple hacks at those pitches, blow your bat up, hands are killing you. It's, it's not fun at all. Literally, break your thumb. And as your, as your career goes on, that's why I just, I just take like 20 pitches in a row. Boom, boom. I'm not swinging today. That, that, that 95 looks like 108, and I'm not swinging. But, you know. This is the time the juices get flowing. It's a lot of fun down there. First spring training uh, that I had with the A's, uh, Ricky Henderson was in the batter's box. One got away and hit him. So he, like, <laughs> he just dropped his bat, walked out of the cage, walked into the clubhouse, was gone. <laughs> right. I never saw him like, for three or four days. Like, I'm not dealing with it. Ricky doesn't hit and get, get hit in BP. <laughs> no, right. He doesn't get hit in BP. <laughs> and he'll tell you that, too. Yeah, I know. Hey, you know, back to Harvey, just uh, real quickly. You talked about how they're going to have him on probably a regimen that's going to try to reduce the workload a little bit. Is he going to buy into that? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, he has said already that he's going to buy into it. It's hard to do it when you're in the middle of it. Um, you know, you, you, you can be started a little later, you know, maybe the home opener, maybe around the All-Star break, get a blow here or there. But I think when you're in the middle of it, it's hard to do. Like, I'm pitching. It's 0-0. Zero, zero, it's the sixth inning. And, like, we're going to hit for you this inning. No, you're not. Really? No, you're yeah, not. Right. Really? I don't think that's going to happen. He seems like the kind of guy that's you got to pull part. the reins back, too, right? I mean, he's, he's a guy who wants to go. That's going to be the hardest part is that when you're in the middle of it and you're competing and you feel like you give your team the best chance to win, and that is kind of taken, you know, the rug is kind of pulled on you. That'll be interesting to see how he reacts yeah. to that. It's but. interesting now, Case, too, with the two wild cards that we've seen, especially last year, we have two wild card teams making it all the way to the World Series here. 
teams now think that, you know what, whereas in the past they may not have thought that they were a postseason t caliber type team. Yeah. Now they're starting to think, you know what, we're not that far away, and the Mets could be one of those teams. Oh, no doubt about it, especially with that rotation, you know, especially with the emergence of DeGrom coming in, Harvey coming back. I mean, you just got to love that rotation and what they bring. That's why you love the second wild card. The second right. wild card. Because you, you come into August, September, now you're like, wow, look at all these cities and these teams that are still in it. The fan base is involved. It's a great thing. And, that, and you look at a team like the Mets and say, hey, listen, they have a good enough ball club to get into that wild card, that second slot, and, and be a big player this year. You know what's interesting is that I have to say, when I first heard about the second wild card, my first thought was, boy, this is going to be like hockey, like everyone gets in, you know, kind of deal. But I was completely wrong. I mean, it's yeah. one of the great things to have uh, as many cities as you can that are in September that are playing some meaningful baseball. And if you look at it this way, the Kansas City Royals, what, won 89 games last year? Yep. And they went when they won game of winning it all. Yep. So any team that out there is that's out there that's won around 80 games, saying to themselves, okay, a game, a game and a half more uh, wins yep. per month, and I'm in the in the. Post and you look at a team like the Padres too, 77 wins last year, add Shields, all the outfielders they added. All of a sudden, you got to make you know you make up eight nine games. All of a sudden, boom! Now you got the San Diego Padres talking about postseason. And reason. the tension uh, if you get that wild card spot. It's one game. That's right. It's not a series. Not yep. two out of three, not three out of five. <laughs> it's one game. How old were you when you stopped playing? I was 34. 35 years old. Yeah, crazy, right? 34 big ones. I'm about at 56. You think you could <laughs> well, 95 miles I was, I was just thinking, basketball. I finished at 35 <laughs> on my birthday. I was released on my birthday <laughs> uh, when I was 35. Was it a good birthday present? Uh, no, because I probably should have stopped at 35. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, Julio Franco, I mean, he stopped playing in the majors at 49, by the way, with the Braves. Well, he's 56 now, and he's over back in Japan, and he's going to be a player manager for the Ishikawa Million Stars. 56 years old. Unbelievable. I mean, this guy played 23 years in the majors, but also spent uh, three seasons or so in Japan. 298 career average. I mean, Julio Franco getting it done. Well, he always kept himself in great shape, but 56 years old, Ronnie. I, I have a tough enough 40 years old. I got to get up and stretch my – just to get out of bed, I'm doing the hamstring stretch, a couple, you know, uh, uh, box yeah. squats. Yeah, like the full, to get pl moving. full Pilates before yeah, you get yeah, out of bed. Yeah. Uh, I think what's interesting is that I got to see Julio late in his career with the Mets and saw Moises Alou late in his career with the Mets. And those are the two guys, I can tell you, without a doubt, could roll out of bed at 75 years old and get a hit. They are just natural born, see it, hit it, put it in play. And um, and it's nice to see uh, Julio back in the game. Yeah, plus with that stance, you don't teach that. That's natural. <laughs> and he had like, and big, big, big bat. Two, it looks like he was swinging with two fingers sometimes like that <laughs> and just buggy whipping you. Just boom, barrel awareness. It's unbelievable. <laughs> he says he wants to get a shot at managing the majors and hopefully it works out for him. 56 years old and still, still playing oh, a little he bit. He loves it.